even the grace discussion we are talking about has to do with sight. The Bible says, and now find grace in the sight of things that we do involve singing. It's my prayer this morning that as the choir have sung that we will see the goodness of God. Yeah. You shall see it in the name of Jesus. Yeah. It will not elude you in Jesus' name. Yeah. Before we sit down, I want us to pray. And the prayer is very simple. Job chapter 42 verse 5. The Bible says that I have here the earrings. Now I will see. Whatsoever you have heard the people say. Whatsoever good news you have had anybody. You've heard them say. Ah, somebody is building a house. Somebody is buying a car. Somebody is marrying. Somebody is doing great and many things. Begin to declare that Father in the name of Jesus. I begin to see it. I begin to see it in the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, I begin to see it. A branch of Topokodi Yadabashta. Abosha, Emba Kiana Manamanaman Sakatele Bosta, Eba Dabala Dabasta. Lord, I see every good thing, every good thing in the name of Jesus that the people out there have been seeing that you've planned for me. I see it by your mercies. Thank you, blessed Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are prayed. Before we sit down, one more prayer that you, I will allow us to sit. The Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 9. Last week, Bishop took us through that scripture when he was talking about the fact that there are generational causes and there are generational blessings. It says, generational causes, we see that it can transit into the fourth generation. But when it comes to the blessing, Bishop said it can translate even for a thousand generations. What that means is that there are some blessings that your four, 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 four fathers have not entered into by virtue of grace we can enter into it i want us to pray and say father every blessing that is that is redundant every blessing that is redundant in my lineage father let it rest upon me in the name of jesus let me be a carrier of those blessings by the mercies of god let me be a carrier of those blessings in the name of jesus christ I am a carrier of those blessings. Yes, Lord. Thank you, blessed Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Say, I prophesy in the mighty name of Jesus that I shall stand out and I shall be outstanding. Say, in the name of Jesus, I shall prosper even as my soul prospereth. Say, I take money out of money. Say, I am the blessed of the Lord. Say, the blessings of the Lord that make it rich and added no sorrow is my portion in the name of Jesus. Say, I am a city set upon the hills that can never be eaten. Say, I am the salt of the head. I am the... I shine in darkness and no darkness can comprehend me. Say, my business receives the power of God in the name of Jesus. Say, every long time project receives speed in the name of Jesus. Say, that contract comes to me by the mercies of God. Hallelujah. Say, I will testify. Say, it is my turn to testify. If you believe that, say a powerful name. Amen. Can we have our seats majestically in the presence of God? Can you give the Lord an irregular shout? Thank you, anointed mistress. Please, can you jam your hands together for them? Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Before I go on very quickly, I would like us to take our regular offering. Then before we move on, please, if you can... Help us display the, um, the account details. And we have the envelope. If anybody wants to see cash, there is POS at the back. If you want to use your ATM. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. David said something. He said, I would never come to the house of God empty handed. I want to believe and trust God that you have something for God this morning. Blessed be the name of the Lord. Are we ready? Can you lift up your offering? Out of the abundance of what God has given to you, 
you are going to give back to him this morning. Please just wave your offering to, to heaven. Wave that phone, whatever you are using to cast your seed. Raise it up. Father, in the name of Jesus, are we all there? Are we ready? Let's do this together. Amen. Hallelujah. Lift up that seed. Lift up that phone. Hallelujah. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you. Thank you for the ability that you have given to us to be able to give back to you. The Bible says, good measure, press down, taking together and running over. Will you cause men to give to us? I decree and I declare, even as we are giving, receive favor beyond your labor. In the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, blessed Father. For in Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. People of God, we can cast our seed. As the Lord bless us together this morning in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. On behalf of our man of God, I will want to welcome us powerfully to this celebration service. Our man of God had, um, is having presently a ministration in a place uh, in Lagos here. And um, I want to know and I want to believe that the power of God that is ministering there is also with us here in the name of Jesus. You know, scripture says that we have, we have not come with the enticing words of men. It says we have come to God in the demonstration of God's power and his wisdom. Today we will see his power in our lives in Jesus' name. I would like, please join me, people of God, damn your hands together as we celebrate our man of God and our mama in absentia. Hallelujah. Mama and Bishop, I want to thank you for this privilege, this opportunity, the trust to be able to release your people. You know, for me to speak the little I have learned. Anything you will see me say here today is what I have learned. And I want you to believe that I am a man under authority. I am standing on the grace of our man of God. And I promise you this morning by the help of the Holy Spirit that nothing short of what the grace upon our man of God would have done this morning if it were to be here, that's what's going to happen to you in the name of Jesus. I know what I'm saying. I know the kind of grace he carries. And by the message of God, I am standing on that grace this morning. And I decree over your life that your life will shift forward with speed in the name of Jesus. Amen. So I want to celebrate our Bishop, Reverend Alexander Farokoju, for this, you know, great opportunity. You know, the shoe of our man of God is too big to enter. But I know by the message of God, I will try my best this morning. And I know you will help me. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right, people of God. This morning, I just to engage us. With something I feel will bless our heart and will take us to another level. This month has been tagged our month of making, managing, and multiplying. And our man of God has done great work, you know, making us to see that the thing that can make, that can manage, that can multiply all what God has given to us is grace. Somebody say, Say grace. Say grace. You know, that word grace, let me quickly explain what I understand it means from previous teaching. Grace is G-R-A-C-E. Help me to separate the G. What do you have? You have race. It means grace is God in your race. Simply put, God inside everything you do. Last week, Bishop said something. He said the presence of grace is the presence of God. Anytime we are talking about grace, there is nothing you can do if you don't put inside it. The Bible made us to understand. He said in the beginning, last one, we all know the scripture. He says in the beginning, God. The first thing that happened in the beginning was God. Before he creates, God introduces himself. There is nothing we can do outside of grace. Hallelujah. 
I'm saying there is nothing we can do outside of God. Help me tap your neighbor. Say, there is nothing I can do outside of God. Hallelujah. Let me quickly do a recap a little bit this morning. And I pray the Lord will bless us in Jesus' name. Father, we ask in your mercy this morning that as I go on, your word will go into us in the name of Jesus. The Bible says the entrance of God's word giveth light and understanding to the simple. I ask that your word will come in the simplicity of your power and your people will be liberated in the name of Jesus. Thank you, blessed Father, for in Jesus' mighty name we are praying. Let me start from John chapter 1 verse 17. John chapter 1 verse 17. The Bible says that the law was given unto Moses, but unto Jesus something, two things were given. The first is grace. The second is truth. In this house, one of the things our man of God is known for is balance. Many a times, what we understand, even right from, you know, our Sunday school, grace and grace and grace and grace alone. That's why somebody will come and say, grace is unmerited favor. Have we had that before? Yes, I agree to some extent. From the teaching of our man of God, you will know that grace, even though it is unmerited, there are some things you need to do. Hello? Even though grace is unmerited favor. And let me quickly add this, that there are two dimensions of grace in scriptures. By the time we classify and collate grace in all of its, you know, in everything, classify it in two dimensions. Number one is the saving grace. That is the grace that I believe is the unmerited favor. Because why you and I are yet sinners, the Bible says Jesus died for us. We did not, I mean, we did not merit that. So it is the saving grace. We have the saving grace. That's why any unbeliever, by the time we are preaching to, you know, the people out there that have not received Jesus, something resonates in their heart. Something upon them that makes them believe that they need to receive Jesus. That grace is called the same. But there is another kind of grace. When we are talking about grace for speed, we are talking about grace for doing exploit. That the enabling grace. Somebody said grace. Say the enabling grace. That's the grace that of God has been in. And I think he has done justice to make us see that we all in this need that grace. Hallelujah. The enabling grace. The grace that comes upon by virtue of the things you do. So, in a way, unmerited, but there are things you need to do. So, very quickly this morning, my mission here is to show up. So, I titled this message, Engaging, Engaging, the works or the workings of grace. Hallelujah. Follow me carefully this morning. And I pray the Lord will bless us together in the name of Jesus. Remember that in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 5 to 8, that scripture that Bishop read to us, it says that for by grace we are saved. He said we are saved through faith. So, saved by God is helping us. What's that? Faith. And let me tell us very quickly that when we talk about faith, faith in its sense is an action word. That's why the Bible says faith without works is what? It's dead. So if we are saying we are saved by grace through faith and you don't want to do the workings of faith because you believe it is unmerited. It will not work. That's why we see a lot of people, they have the grace, they come to a, a service like this, they come to church, 
they receive the grace and their life is still remaining the same way. Why? They are not doing the walkings of grace. Some know the walkings of the grace, but they are not engaging the walkings of that grace. This morning, I only want to admonish us that it is not enough for us to say that we know the workings of the grace. It is not for us to know that we are saved by grace, but it is important for us to know that we need to engage the workings of grace. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Somebody say, I will engage the workings of grace. Say, I will engage the workings of grace. I want media to help me this morning to open to 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So many things that grace has done for us. Number one, Bishop told us that the grace of God helps our infirmity. Let me quickly run through this. The grace of God helps our infirmity. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. Just put that scripture there. Second Corinthians chapter 12, verse 9. He also told us that the grace of God provides for us. Second Corinthians chapter 9, verse 8. At chapter 9 verse 8 it told us that the grace of God also gives us inheritance at the end of majority of the posts that our man of God will say you will hear I commend you to God and the word of his grace that is able to build you up and give you an inheritance among those of us that are sanctified so what the word of his grace does is that it gives us inheritance I decree this morning that every of your inheritance, wherever it is, the grace of God is finding them for you right now in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Let me also quickly establish that grace is found. Hello? Grace is what? Many a times where you see scriptures, little than scriptures, you will hear and now find grace in the sight of God. Uh, Moses told God, he said, God, I will not go until I see your presence going with me. He says, if I have found grace in your sight, people of God, for you to say, I have found grace, that means you are seeking. Am I right? So my question is this, what exactly are you doing to seek? Or how do you seek? So that you can find. Because many people just feel that this gospel of grace will just come on a platter of the fact that you believe. Yes, it will come, but it might not work. Let me give us an analogy. Let's assume that I have the grace to drive. I know how to drive. I've gone to driving school. I even have the license to drive. Somebody has even given me a car. Do you understand? And I want to travel to, let's say, Ibadan or Ogun State. People of God, if I don't step into that car and effort to start the car, put it in gear and accelerate, I will not get to Ibadan. If I have the grace, I have the ability, I have everything it takes to get to Ibadan. But because I am not engaging, because I am not moving. Because I am not being deliberate. Even if I sit in the car and I don't start, I will not still get to Ibadan. Even if I start and I don't accelerate, I will not still get to Ibadan. So it is not just about, you know, talking about grace. I am graced. I am graced. I am grace filled. No. It's about having that consciousness of the fact that the grace of God is upon my life and then I need to engage and work with it. Hallelujah. We all need to do. You know, Bishop gave us five things that we need to do to provoke grace. Or to receive grace. He talked about, number one, two, prayer. Number three, no, before giving, Number three, uh, we need to 
actually go back to the things that Bishop has taught us. Knowledge. Thank you. Number four, transfer. And number five, giving. Yes, this you the enabling grace. It will. Bishop has dealt with that part. Making sure that you don't have the look. Making sure that you are prayerful. Making sure. Let me even quickly, on that issue of prayer. You know, you can be a man that is for prayer. And the gift and the evidence of that prayer is not being seen in your life. Hope you know. The reason why that will happen is if you don't engage. Pray. I can pray from now till next year. The grace is there. But you are not doing it. There is no way that prayer can work for you. So he gave us those five things. Those things that we need to do to receive the grace. Now remember, I'm talking about the enabling grace. I'm not talking about the saving grace. We all have that. But I'm talking about the grace that can empower. Can we quickly go to Titus chapter 2? Let me show us something. The grace, this grace I'm talking about this morning, is the grace that can empower you. Titus chapter 2. Verse 11. Hallelujah. Are we getting blessed this morning? Titus chapter, okay, are we there? Now, people of God, look at this. It says, for the grace of God that bringeth salvation has appeared to all men. This is the saving grace. The grace of God has appeared to all men. The saving grace. Verse 12, please. Verse 12. Hallelujah. It says, teaching us that denying, so what that grace would do, that it would teach us. Please put this there. Three things that the grace of God would do. The grace of God will save. The grace of God will teach. And the grace of God will empower. Can you repeat that after me? Say the grace of God will save. The grace of God will teach. And the grace of God will empower. I pray these three dimensions of God's grace will be seen in our lives in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Don't forget that we are talking about engaging the workings of grace. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. So, can I have that scripture? Titus chapter 2 verse 12. Hallelujah. All right. Sitting us that denying ungodliness and worldly loss, we should live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world. So I've been able to show us the, the grace that saves, the grace that teaches you. This is all what that grace will teach you to do. Now let me show us the grace that empowers. Hallelujah. For I know this morning that you will receive that empowerment in the name of Jesus. No one here will go without receiving that empowerment. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 and 8. The grace that empowers. I want to go there myself because I would like to read a particular translation that interprets what I'm about to say right now. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 7 to 8. Are we there? All right. People of God, can you see this? It's a where of I was made a minister according to the gift of grace of God given unto me by the effectual working of his power. Verse 8. Verse 8. 
unto me, who I am less than the least of all the saints, is this grace given? Please, do you have the Passion Translation? Do we? If we don't, let me read it from here. The Passion Translation, if you have it, please let me bring it up. The Passion Translation. People of God, hear what it says here. Ephesians chapter 3 and verse 7 to 8. It says, I have been made a messenger of this wonderful news by the gifts of grace that works through me. It says, even though I am the least significant of all his holy believers, this grace gift was imparted when the manifestation of his power came upon me. Note the manifestation of his power. I'm talking about the grace that empowers. Now look at what it says. It says grace alone empowers me so that I can boldly preach. For Paul here, because Paul is an apostle, the grace that was upon him empowers him to be able to preach the gospel. The grace that our minister here will receive is going to be the grace that will empower him to function in what God has called him to do. In what God has given to him. So, to be mistaken, if my, for example, let's assume, please sit down, sir, thank you. If my minister Let's assume he's an engineer, for example. I would be mistaken if there is a, you know, to be creative, to create something upon his life and is working for him. Now comparing it to some, a barber. But it's a different kind of grace. The grace of God comes upon us to empower us with what is in our hands. With what God has given to you and I. He says, alone. Remember, I have finished it from the beginning. Grace is God in your race. So, grace alone, God alone, is the one that can empower you. Without God, we are nothing. Paul said, he said, I am whom I am, the grace of God. It didn't stop there. Can we go to that scripture? I think it's 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 10. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. 1 Corinthians. Let me just go there. Mandabala Susa Prakatista. Okay, yes. It says, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. And his great which was bestowed upon me was not in vain. I'm going to talk about three categories of the negative things that we can do to grace very soon. There are three things that we can do that will not make grace to be functional in our lives. But that's not where I'm going to. Please, please keep it up. He said, but I labor. Somebody say, I labor. Say, I labor. That is the work. The grace was upon his life. But Paul said, I still have to labor. He didn't use the work. He didn't even use the work I work. If you know what we call labor. Labor. Those people that used to. You know, you know. Paul said, I labor. So, if you read that scripture very well, it says that, and his grace was bestowed upon me, was not in vain. Why? Because he was laboring. So, the grace can be upon you, if you don't labor, that grace is going to be in vain. Three, that's the, that. This one, not laboring, but it's not in vain. Number two, the Bible makes us to understand that you can frustrate the grace of God. Galatians chapter 2 and verse 21. Say, I will not 
frustrate the grace of God over my life. Are we there? Galatians chapter 2. It says, I do not frustrate the grace of God. Another translation says, I do not trivialize. That is, you just don't count it. You just look at it, then you know it's just it's just it's just my effort. You believe that it is what you do that is bringing that money. You believe that it is what you do that is keeping your children. That it is the food you healthy. You believe that it is your power. When you begin to have that kind of mentality, the Bible says that you are frustrating the grace of God. Even though you need to labor. Even though we need to walk, but if we don't want to frustrate this grace, we need to acknowledge the fact that it is not of me, but it's of God. Because grace in itself is God. Bishop told us that grace is all, everything that God has to give to you and I. Grace. You know, in the Old Testament, grace is established as blessing. Do we remember that? So everything that we have, that was when he was sharing the example of, you know, Isaac and Jacob and Esau. When he said, go and bring so also for me. And the brother deceived, I mean, Jacob deceived um, Isaac and he poured out his blessings. That's the grace. He poured out the blessing. That's the grace. That's not the blessings. Bishop was telling us this morning that there is a difference between the blessing and the blessings. That's why scripture says that there is a blessing. It is a blessings. Blessing that make it rich and added no sorrow. Let me give us an illustration. If I hold um, maybe a thousand naira like this. Now, I can walk to get this. Am I right? Please, if I walk to get money, this paper, what do I do to really own what brings this paper? You're not getting me. Now, I can walk and give you this. What I am paying you for is not really this paper. Is the value you are placing on the table that is bringing this. In Nigeria today, if they say this is no more useful, it is white sheet of paper that we need. I hope you know that this will be on the streets of Nigeria and nobody will take it. Am I right? Now, what is bringing this is actually value. Am I right? So my question is this. What do you do to get value? What do you pay to get value? Hmm? 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 It's work you do to get value. No. Knowledge, thank you. Knowledge. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 23. Knowledge. I'm, I'm, I'm getting somewhere. Just follow me carefully. I will round up in the next 5-10 minutes by the mercies of God. And I pray that this will count for something in the name of Jesus Christ. Jeremiah chapter 9. Okay, yes. Verse 23. Bible says, it says, Thus say the Lord, let not the wise man glory in his own wisdom. And I just don't think it is my work that is giving me this. Don't let your glory be in that. It says, neither let the mighty man glory in his mind. I have power now. I mean, they do am. If not for me. Bible says, let not the rich man glory in the riches. That is, you have this. Don't say, ah, <laughs> I get them. Look at what it says. What should we glory in? Next verse. What should you boast in? 
Verse 24. What should we boast in? What will bring that value? It says, but let him that glorieth in this, that he understandeth and knoweth knowledge. That he understandeth and knoweth. That is what we should glory in. Because these are the things that will bring the grace. He says that I am the Lord which exercises loving kindness, judgment and righteousness in the earth. For in these things are delight. That means even though we walk, even though we labor, even though all these things, it is God that is exercising. It is God that is walking behind the scene, walking at the back end to give you the strength to do what you are doing. Praise the Lord. Let me narrow it down. Hallelujah. How do we engage? You know, the Bible says that grace, it says, can we continue in sin? I will say grace will abound. That means that grace is not an avenue for laziness. Grace is not an avenue for lawlessness. Grace is not an avenue for us to do anything anyhow. How do we engage grace? Number one, obedience to humility. Obedience, constant obedience to humility. That's the first thing. Constant obedience to humility. Hallelujah. James chapter 4 verse 6. Because of my time, we can just write that down. Number two, obedience to prayer. Obedience to prayer. The Bible says in James chapter 5, it says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous, it says it makes tremendous power available and is dynamic in his working. That is, the grace that empowers you, how you engage it, is when you obey the principles of prayer. When you obey the principles of prayer, the effectual. So the principle of prayer tells us that your prayer must be effectual, your prayer must be fervent, the effectual, fervent prayer of the righteous. It says when you do that, it will now make tremendous power available. That's grace. And it will be dynamic in its workings. Hallelujah. That's number two. Number three. Obedience to getting knowledge. I just read a scripture, James chapter 9, verse 23. Daniel chapter 11, verse 32. I discover that the prerequisite for doing exploits in life it's not even how well you can walk. It's the amount of knowledge that you have. Daniel chapter, chapter 11 verse 32. Alright. It says, And as such as do wickedly against the covenant, shall it corrupt the flatteries. It says, But the people that know their God, not the ones that come to church, not even the one that preaches. Not the one that Not the one that... I don't care. The only criteria is knowledge. Is knowledge. So obedience to the things that you know. You know, I'm not just saying knowledge alone. But making sure that you are constantly getting something. Those that know their God, they shall be strong... And eventually, they will do exploit. I decree you will do exploit. I said you will do exploit. In your place of work, you will do exploit. In the name of Jesus. Osea chapter 4 verse 6. Still on knowledge. Osea chapter 4 verse 6. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I don't know if I'm blessing you this morning. I decree you will be blessed in the name of Jesus. It says, my people are destroyed for what? Lack of knowledge. Why? 
Because they have rejected knowledge. They rejected it. They have rejected it. I will also reject them. You will not be rejected in the name of Jesus. That will not be our portion in Jesus' name. It says that thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law of thy God. This will not be our portion in Jesus' name. Because we will accept knowledge in the name of Jesus. Also, obedience to giving. Obedience to giving. Hallelujah. Everyone, I wrote here, I said, everyone that saw the grace of God walked the grace. Everyone. Starting from our father Abraham to Esther. People of God. The Bible says, Esther find favor in the sight of the king. Am I right? But if Esther did not stand up and say, yes, I am, even though I perish, I perish. I want to go to the king's banquet. Even though I know I'm not supposed to go, but I'm just going to dare it. People of God, when it gives you the ability to dare the undareable. It says, faith, this thing calling, he says it is calling those things that are not as if they were. So, you look at yourself. You needed something. You've come to a service like this. You've received grace. Then you get out there. They now said, ah, my brother, my sister, can you for us? He said, ah, no. I don't know how to do it. Ah, never say no. Tell your neighbor, never say no. Say, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Because that grace is upon you. It will empower you to do all that you need to do, even though it might not be directly. You might know somebody that knows somebody that knows somebody that can do that thing. And you get your commission. Hallelujah. Talking about engaging the grace of God. Number what am I? Number five, right? Now, number six. Hallelujah. Understanding the signals of the Spirit. When we go like this and we receive grace, how do we engage? One of the things that happens to us is the moment we begin to move in our... Because this place that we are talking about is supposed to be reflecting in our lives. In the way I transact my business. In the way I relate with my people. So how do I do that? So you might just be walking and somebody just walks up to you. Don't see it as a coincidence. Or something just comes up in you. There is a prompting in you. So they call it the signals of the spirit. It just come. A thought just come. Don't know it. Even if it is something you know that you don't have the ability to do. But because you have an understanding about the grace of God, you dare it understanding the signals of the spirit and following it and following it that's how we gauge the workings of the grace hallelujah very quickly the, the i think i have just two here more i wrote a, i said recognizing opportunities and moments when you receive grace the grace of god comes upon our lives like this god will create circumstances it will create opportunity will say he will create moments like that you need to know that that is your time the bible talks about the sons of Issachar. it says they understand time and they understand season we need to be that people that can understand time and that can understand season that can understand that this is my opportunity this is my moment that's how grace will work for us i pray it will work for you and i in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. And lastly, I said, knowing the purpose of the relationship and contact that God brings to you. Our bishop will call it providential relationships. Everything God will do on earth, he will still do it through a man. The best of a man is still a man. That's why the angels looked and they say, who 
O man, there is something about us that the world is seeing like, ah, what, what is it about these people? Because of man, God allowed his only son to die. Bishop was telling you this morning that he had to look back. He had to neglect him. He had to forsake his only son. My people, you are special. Say, I am special. Say, I cannot live a life of mediocrity. In the name of Jesus, I live a purposeful life. Say, my life has value. Let me tell us something. One of the reasons why we are facing challenges is because you have value. Have you ever seen Anne perching on iodine? Have you ever seen ants perching on spirits or bitter leaf? A wuro. You don't. But pop Pepsi here now. You will not know where they will come from. This place is clean. But pop Pepsi or Fanta or anything sugary, they will come. Ants are those challenges that are seeing your glory. That are seeing how grace God has destined you and I. They are coming. But I have a good news for us. The Bible says many are the afflictions of the righteous. It didn't say unbeliever. It didn't say any other person. The righteous. You, 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 you. He called it affliction. But the good news is that he said God will deliver them from all. From all. From all. As I close, Second Corinthians, Second Corinthians, chapter four, and I bring this to a close. Verse eighteen and nineteen. Are we there? Kabbalah dabash People of God, can we do this together? Verse 18 and 19. Can you go to this verse 18? Let's go to verse 17, please. I wanted to, want to say verse 17 and 18. Verse 17. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Yes, look at this. The Bible said, our light affliction People of God, I don't care what you are passing through. The scripture calls light affliction. is light. I don't care how much the pressure is. I don't care how much the challenge is. Our light affliction. It says it's but for a moment. Psalm 35 says weeping may endure for a night. He said, but joy, our hope, everything we have in us is because we know weeping may endure for a night. Some of us, we are in our night season. If only you can hold on a little bit, the joy comes in the morning. I say your joy comes in the morning. I say your joy comes in the morning. He says, for our light affliction, which is but for a moment, Work it for us a far more exceeding and eternal weight of glory. There is no story without glory. What you are passing through is to bring a better glory. I decree your glory will shine. That scripture says arise and shine. That means you are on the ground before. Before you can say arise. It says you are on the floor. So don't be afraid to be on the floor. Don't be afraid at your present situation because you are rising. Because you are rising. I say you are rising. I say you are rising. In the name of Jesus, everywhere you turn to, movement, movement, speed. In the name of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. The next verse of that scripture, it says, but for we do not. We can, we can just stand. I'm, 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 I'm rounding up right now. It says, for we we do not look at the things that are, that are temporal. We do not set our gaze on those things that are temporal. That challenge is but for a moment. She 
shift your gaze of it. It says, for we look not at the things which are seen. Those tangible things that you can see, that headache, lay it aside. That bill that you can see, I know your landlord is disturbing you. Forget about it. It says, don't look at those things that you can see. He said, but look at the things that are not seen. Why? For the things which are seen, are temp- they will pass away. Have you noticed for every challenge you have, it's just a matter of time you come out of it. The, the, the thing that you should be looking at is, how will I look when I am going through that process? How do I want to story? If I begin to share my own story now, everybody will be amazed. Ah, God has helped him. If Bishop used to share, I mean, stand here and share his story, everybody will be amazed. You know, I thought of something. We will say grace. Some people will say grace is luck. Abi, our bishop is lucky. He is riding, you know, a Mercedes Benz ML350 2015. Or you will say Bishop Oyedepo is lucky. He has a cathedral. But I pray, pray, prayer, that the luck have that look. You don't understand. Because it's not only grace, man. I'm bringing something to us. The lock that made that died and was still serving God. That's a lock. Do you understand? Don't look at the result of other people. Look at the sacrifice they pay. Get there. Before you begin to say, Abraham blessings am I. Abraham looked, believed, and this child, the only child I would If it is luck, put yourself in that position, then I will know that it's luck. There is no luck in this kingdom. Bishop said, this grace is the revelation of the things that has been done and we can reproduce. If your grace is not reproducing things, it is not grace. So we need to come to a point whereby we can say, okay, Bishop Uyidepo is lucky. I agree. He is lucky because grace is working for him. But he has engaged the workings of his faith. When he said he did not travel for good eight years, he stayed in the presence of God. Our bishop is lucky. He's driving Benz. Went for a whole year as a senior pastor. He was using his leg to walk out to church and all about. People that you see out there, that grace is upon, they don't sit down. They stand up and they walk. It's my this morning that this teaching would not just inspire you, but it would drive you to engage. In the name of Jesus, I decree and I declare by the mercies of God that everywhere you need to stand up and arise to the occasion, you are receiving strength in the name of Jesus. The Bible says we should be strong in the grace of the Lord. That means in this, in the, in, in, in the presence of grace, there is strength. People of God receive strength in the name of Jesus. Receive strength in the name of Jesus. Receive strength. Scripture says, I have given you the key unto the kingdom of heaven. That whatsoever be bound on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatsoever we lose on earth shall be loose in heaven. I decree and I declare every good tidings in the name of Jesus will lose into your life. In the name of Jesus, I lose into your life prosperity. I lose into your life abundance. I lose into your life good health. In the name of Jesus. And I bound every for of darkness from the pit name of Jesus. I say lose your grip. In the name of Jesus. Lift up your hands all you gates and be ye lifted up be everlasting doors. Who is this king of glory? The Lord strong and mighty. The Lord mighty in battle. I decree going forward every gate, every window, every door standing against your life, standing against your destiny. They are pulled away in the name of Jesus. I say they are pulled away in Jesus' name. I stand under the grace of Reverend Alexander Farankojo. 
and I come in the demonstration of God's power and of God's spirit. And I decree and I declare, receive your blessings. Receive your miracle. Go forward. Go and happen. In the name of Jesus Christ. That angel, he looked at Zechariah. He says, I am Gabriel that standeth in the presence of God. How dare you not believe me? There is something about the presence of God. Gabriel is a type and shadow of the wisdom of God. Michael is a type and shadow of the power of God. That's why everywhere you get to and you want the power of God to manifest, God will not send Gabriel. Who he will send is Michael. Michael will take the sword and begin to dissect because he is the power of God. But when you are looking for some things, when you are looking for wisdom, Angel Gabriel will come. I declare and I declare to you will not have the wisdom of God being manifested in your life. You will have the power of God also in the name of Jesus Christ. I decree one more time that you will not only have the wisdom of God being expressed in your day to day life, but you will have the power of God in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. I want you to begin to pray in the Holy Ghost. As you are praying, begin to imagine. Imagine how you want your week to be. Begin to imagine the great and mighty things that God is going to do for you. Begin to imagine. The Bible says, Creator is calling those things that are not as if they were. Can you open up your heart? Can you open up your heart? There are moments in the spirit uh, that you must not miss. Uh, these are such kind of moments. Uh, I don't know what challenge you brought to church this morning. Uh, Bible says upon Mount Zion, there shall be deliverance.